Good afternoon. I'm Ivan Penn, a business reporter with the Los Angeles Times. And we're here today uh, in this segment to discuss propositions 65 and 67 regarding reusable plastic bags. Joining uh, me today are Phil Rosinski uh, from the American Progressive Bag Alliance and Dan Jacobson from Environment California. Each one of them is going to open with a one minute uh, opening statement, and uh, and then we will begin our discussion. And we'll start with you, Phil. Uh, my name is Phil Rosensky. I'm with the American Progressive Bag Alliance. We're the trade association that represents the manufacturers and recyclers and the 30,000 people employed by them in the United States. Uh, we were part of a coalition that registered Proposition 67, which allows the public to have a referendum on SB 270, the plastic bag ban, which includes a 10 cent fee on paper and thick gauge plastic bags. Uh, we believe that this law, not only does it not do anything for the environment, it'll be net negative for the environment in California, but also um, this bill was never really passed about the environment. This bill, most of the people don't realize, it was really about the money it generates for corporate interests. We also registered uh, Proposition 65 on the ballot because we know some people uh, are going to be mixed on the bag ban, but we know that the public is universally in agreement that they want any money collected in a tax or fee to go to a public purpose and not a corporation. This is an interesting law. It's one of the first laws that directly takes public taxes and turns them into corporate profits. Thank you very much for having me, and my name is Dan Jacobson with Environment California. Um, every year, the state of California uses 13 billion single-use plastic bags, and that's billion with a B. If stretched out end to end, you could circle the globe over 200 times just with what California is using. There's no doubt that we're using too many of these plastic bags. Only 5% of them are actually getting recycled, which means the rest are ending up on the sides of our highways, the sides of our streets, in our trees, in our, um, our local neighborhoods, in local um, parks and uh, into the rivers, and eventually they end up in the oceans, where if they're not eaten by an animal, they break into smaller and smaller plastics. And new reports have come out from the Monterey Bay Aquarium and other experts that say by 2050, we'll have more plastic than fish. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, this will be a very interesting discussion here, because um, there have obviously been a lot of stories in the media written about it. And Phil, I'm, I'm gonna start with a question for you. The, the California Voter Foundation said it is unusual to have one organization proposing more than one measure on the ballot and having those measures operate somewhat in conflict. Some have even accused your organization of trying to confuse voters. Would you explain the rationale for American Progressive Bag Alliance pushing both ballot measures? Mm, that's a really good question. There, we don't see any confusion with the ballot measures. To start off with, Proposition 65 is very straightforward. If the public wants any taxes collected under these laws to go to a public purpose, they vote yes. If they want it to go to corporate profits, they vote no. Proposition 67 is a referendum on the actual bag ban that was passed by the state legislature that includes a 10 cent fee on paper and thick gauge reusable, uh, thick gauge plastic bags such as this. The reason we needed to do this, we had always said we would take this to the voters. These laws never started passing for any environmental reason. That is false. Groups want to claim that, but the fact is all the local ordinances and the state ordinance or the state law in California only started to pass when corporations realized we can lobby to get the money and there were corporate interests in there. So what happened was two issues were linked together. And by putting separate uh, propositions on the ballot, we can separate that. While some people are going to vote for a bag ban, we know that, and some are going to vote against it, we know the public is universally upset with the fact that this law was used to funnel hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions every year into corporations. And that's what wasn't realized with this. But I want to be clear, these laws never passed for the environment. They only started to pass when they handed the money to corporations and they started funding the lobbying. Then how do, how do you respond to that, and especially in the context that the proposal here is to have those funds redirected to an environmental cause? 
Uh, it's hard to know where to start on that because there's a lot of things that just seem inaccurate. The first is, is this confusing? Every newspaper editorial that's been written in the state of California has started off by saying it's confusing. And the Bakersfield Californian, which is not a bastion liberal paper, has said this is a confusing issue and they've made it that way. Second, we are saying this issue passed because the corporations were trying to make money. I would love it if you guys were becoming the anti-corporate spokespeople for this election. I don't think that the plastic bag manufacturers, that's their case. Environmental groups up and down the state of California in over 150 cities passed local bag bans without a single corporation supporting it. The California Grocers Association, who I think you're referring to, opposed the bills until over 100 cities had banned single-use plastic bags. At that point, they came on and said, wait, we need a single policy to, in the state of California, we don't want to live in a state and work in a state where there's, in one street, there's one way where there's the plastic bag, and in another street, there's another. That's the only reason that they came on. This is the strongest environmental measure supported by editorial boards up and down the state of California, by environmental groups, the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce and the Los Angeles Business Association is in support of this with the California Labor Federation. This is a unanimously popular program in the state of California, and we deserve for people to vote yes on Prop 67. If, if I could on that, let, let's be clear about this. There was only a couple cities that passed this. It was when the grocers started living at the local level. I would like, and I would love, if the Grocers Association or the retailers were up here. When you look at the campaign filings and you see where all the money for the opposition for the 65 and 67 comes from, it's from the corporate grocers who are going to get the money. Amazingly, with them being the funders of this, every time I've done an interview, they're not here. I understand they want to put a label on this, but then that money from the campaign gets funneled for the groups that are here today. There's this interesting special interest combination that went on in Sacramento. Everybody who walked the halls while this was being debated knew that. This was and is about the money. It's not about the environment. People don't realize this is the bag mandated under the law. Not that's going away. This is the bag you'll be using, a bag that's five times thicker. Yes, people will use less of them, but the forecasts are the net tonnage of plastic in California is going to go up by 30%. Now, 30%. If you want it out of the environment, okay. it's going to go up. This is about the money. It's not about the environment. And, and, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you, let you respond. Um, but, but coupled with your response, you know, some are saying that it, that it is an overreach by government and that it's overtaxing consumers to add that 10 cents. First, let me respond. I was at hundreds of city council meetings during the 10 years that we've been debating these plastic bags in cities and towns up and down the state of California. And it was local soccer moms and dads who were standing up there with environmental city councilors who were saying, we want to ban single-use plastic bag because it's a good thing for the environment. There were no other spokespeople speaking on it. When if it was local soccer moms, I, I was the lobbyist in Sacramento, just to be clear. It was me who was lobbying every day for eight years to pass that bill. When first it was Mike Davis had the bill, then it was Julia Brownlee, then it was finally Alex Padilla. To, to assume, and, but let's get off the, the thing. We're using too much plastic in the state of California. Again, we're using 13 billion. This is after 150 cities have banned single-use plastic bags in the state of California. We were up to 18 billion bags a year. The local bag bangers are totally working. We've reduced by over 5 billion bags a year the amount of trash that's ending up in our oceans. If we can pass this bill and, and reduce the amount of plastic that we're using and, 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 and move to you know, reusable bags in the state of California, what a great way to protect the environment every time you go shopping. Every time you can take, if you want to take that bag, that's fine, but people have their own favorite bags that they like to take. This is a solution that's so broad and it's so important, but we're so lucky because it's so easy. 
But There's not a single person that doesn't well, have a reusable bag an in the state of California. And, 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 Phil, and as you respond to that, okay, um, some of the comments that uh, you've made in the media are that the bags aren't as harmful as has been portrayed. Mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you respond and address oh, that? Absolutely, I think a lot of numbers and you know hyperbole is used to create more of an emotional debate than a scientific debate. But again, we're talking about you may use less bags, but if you're mandating more plastic in the bag, you're getting a net increase here in California. Uh, maybe not your group, but a lot of the groups in your coalition are now lobbying for Hawaii, who has the exact law that California's voting on today, to repeal it because there's too much plastic in these thicker bags. And that's the question. But the science left the building years ago, and let's be clear, this only passed at the state level when corporations showed up and said, we will give you legitimacy and support this if rather than making it a tax, you let us keep all the money. This is a six cent bag for 10 cents. We did a FOIA request on Los Angeles County that has a similar ordinance. The largest grocery stores are making $22,000 a year profit. The mid-sized grocery stores are making 15,000. It is now the highest revenue and highest margin producing item in a grocery store. There is a reason why they're lobbying it. By the way, in 2014, the law actually failed. There was a reconsideration vote three days before the session ended. And the reason it failed is the grocers unions came out in opposition because they sent a letter to the Speaker of the Assembly saying they were concerned about what the retailers were going to do with all this money. A day later, they put out a letter and it said, after coming to an agreement with our retailers of what they're going to do with the money, we now support it. It was only the unions and the grocers who pushed it across the line. Believe me, I know your group is an environmental group and that's the brand you have, but this law did not pass, nor has it ever been about the environment. It's about the money that they're so so taking again, from the public. Every single life cycle analysis that's done by the experts has said that using the reusable bag is better for the environment than a single-use plastic bag. That's, cor that's and incorrect. I'm it not talking about just or, or Dan, the environmentalist here. We're talking about the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Some of the most respected marine biologists in the world that have looked at this issue and said it is imperative that we start to reduce the amount of single-use plastic bags that we're using, not only in the state of California, but we want this to spread to other states. So, so that's so exactly where we should to, be going. To achieve that, this bag, by law, needs 125 uses. Do you think this bag is going to be used 125 times? Well, well, well so Phil, what, what is the, the evidence that the reusable bag will be a, have a, a negative effect on the environment? So the dollar bags you see at a grocery store are called non-woven polypropylene. Uh, the most respected study that's out right now was done by Clemson, who looked at all the various types of reusable bags. I think you needed like 27 to 30 reuses of that bag before it breaks even. The average consumer is using that bag like six or seven times because we get so many. Do you know that one dollar bag you see at the grocery store, not even this thin one, we import a half a billion with a B per year for only about 7% of the people in the United States. Those bags have quickly become the new disposable bag and has a greater impact. They're a non-recyclable bag. They're made from China. They're taking the jobs of our companies and shipping them to, to China for a bag that's got more impact on the environment. And yes, all of those reusable bags, with, except for about a half a percent of the market, are plastic. Well, so Dan, how do we ensure that consumers reuse the, the thicker bag? Ivan, that's a great question. And, and the really thing that's interesting about this is that we have 150 case studies. If this ballot measure hadn't had 150 cities that have taken the time to look at that exact question, I'd go, I don't know the answer. But in San Francisco, we've seen a reduction in plastic bag litter. In San Jose, we've seen a reduction in plastic bag litter. In the city of Los Angeles, we've seen a reduction in plastic bag litter. Not only is it working exactly as it's supposed to, but it's saving taxpayers money. One of the reasons that at the local level and at the state level, 
the state legislators and the city council supported this is because we use taxpayer dollars every single day to clean up millions in every year billions of these single-use plastic bags that are ending up in our ocean. And we have 150 case studies well, well, let's that say talk about this those, is working. Those 150 case studies. Huntington Beach was the first in, in, in California to repeal it. Several other cities like Chicago and around the country are looking at this. It's a bad policy. Plastic retail bags are less than 1% of the litter. And I want to key on, this is some of the wording we're giving out here. You can ban anything and I will guarantee it will go away. So of course if you banned it, it went away. But there was a study done in San Francisco in the Bay. Uh, there was a, uh, gosh, it's the Stormwater Management Agency Association out there. And they studied the polystyrene and plastic bag ban because they have to get litter out of the bay. And they found out you ban plastic bags, they're not in the litter stream. You ban polystyrene, they're not in the litter stream. But when they measured the litter that was still going into the bay, what they found out reported it had negligible impact on the net litter stream because it was such a small fraction. This is a fool's errand in approach to litter. Our industry does not want our product littered. We work in recycling and education, but to promote this as a solution to our litter problems is false. That 150 case studies is political science because over 60% of the state has not wanted this and you're gonna force it upon them. So, so if the voters, uh, went against the bag ban, mm -hmm. what would you suggest are alternatives? Well, I mean, to, to deal with, with the trash and the litter. A, 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 excellent points. What we do need to do is take a more comprehensive approach to litter and marine debris as a society. Anything that's littered is a problem. What we're talking about here is, well, we have to make people use reusable bags more. Well, but we don't want to educate about recycling. That's been the strange hypocrisy of this debate was we can educate people to use a reusable bag, but we can't educate them about recycling. It's not. That's just that these ordinances, we're capable of educating society better about litter and recycling and making a greater impact beyond this product and doing more for our communities. But uh, you know, this, this current approach is a slash and burn approach, and these laws never started passing until there was money involved. So, so Dan, what, 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 and what will make this, what will make it work? The, the plastic ban, bag ban, what will make it work uh, in, in your view? First, let me just talk about the recycling, which is that the recycling centers hate these um, cheap single-use plastic bags because they get caught up in the gears of the machines. They have to stop the recycling machines. Someone has to go up and clean them. It, it takes hours of time for them to do it. Th that, you know, we've sort of gone down that road we don't want to make that same mistake and, again. And the, and the thicker bag would work? And, and again, the, the ideal here is that we use reusable bags and people would be using them for hundreds. If not, there's people who would go thousands of times. If you uh, are going down the street and you and your wife or your partner decide, oh, let's go and have a picnic in the park, and, and for some reason you don't have your reusable bag and you have an option to buy a bag that will last 125 times, that's a environmentally a significantly better option than having a bag that we use for two minutes that ends up polluting our environment for thousands and thousands of years. We, we have uh, two minutes and give each one of you uh, a, a minute to, to have your closing comments and, and Phil will start with you and we'll give Dan the last word. Sure. Uh, again, our industry and a, and a coalition of others work together to put two propositions on the ballot. We're looking for the public to vote yes on, pro our, uh, vote yes on Proposition 67. Or excuse me, no on Proposition 67. Sorry about that, I, got a, I was going out in numerical order there. Uh, no on 67, which would overturn the bag ban. We know that the part of the public um, sees that there would be a bag ban. I'm sure yourself will be voting for that. But also consideration of where this money goes and the precedence it sets. And that's for Proposition 65, we'd like a yes, that would ensure that any money collected under a fear tax through these would be used for a public purpose and not corporate profits. Um, we don't see this doing anything for the environment. We see it having a net negative impact over time. It's going to hurt jobs. And again, this was only about money. It's not really about the environment. Environmental groups up and down the state of California, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, 
the California Labor Federation, the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce agree that we have a problem with single-use plastic pollution that's ending up in our ocean and harming our marine wildlife. This is such a major environmental problem, but again, the solution is so obvious. It's so rare that we have a time like this where there's a real big environmental problem, but we can all do something about it. The first thing that you can do is vote yes on Prop 67 and let's ban these single-use plastic bags. The next thing everybody can do is so easy. Bring your bag when you go to the grocery store. E even he was just confused when he was going, oh, 65. Join every major paper in the state of California and vote yes on 67. Uh, I would hold off. Not every major paper is in agreement with you. There's a mix of them. Well, thank you, Phil, and thank you, Dan, for your participation, and thank you all for attending.